Hello again. So if you've been following along in the videos, we've created this small island uh, that we've started building a level on. Uh, we don't really have any interactions other than being able to jump around on some objects and enter a building. Um, so we need to actually start putting together some, let's call it, gameplay. I'm going to dive into a uh, basic uh, start to scripting so we can create an object that we can collect. So first, we need an object. Uh, let's go to Game Object, Create Other, and I'm going to click on Sphere. And Sphere is going to be our item. I'm actually going to put it up here on the top of this ledge at the end of our platforming puzzle. So there's our object. We have to make sure that it's low enough so that the player can collect it, um, but you know, high enough so we can see it. That looks pretty good. So this is going to be our item. I'm going to rename this uh, item. And then I want this item to stand out. So I'm going to add a point light to it. Uh, so I'm going to go to game object and then create other. And then let's do a point light. And the point light I'm just going to drag under item and then set it to 000. zero, zero. And there we go. So we've got kind of a light coming off of it to show that it's fancy and special. The item itself has a, a collider on it so that you can bump into it um, as well as uh, the renderer and everything else. So uh, that's all fine and dandy. I just need to be able to pick this up. So let's create our first script. Uh, create and C sharp script. And I'm going to work with C sharp for the rest of these tutorial videos. So C sharp script and let's call this uh, item. And just like that, it creates a very simple script with your uh, layout of how things need to be written. Um, and I'm just going to drag this onto this object. So uh, right here, drag and drop. And there's our item script attached as a component to the item item. Um, now I'm going to go into actually opening MonoDevelop and start working with it. So just double click on your script. And it's going to load up the program that we can start actually altering the functionality. Just give it a moment. Alrighty, so this is an empty script, uh, except for it has some things that it's using uh, to give it uh, the certain functionality that Unity uh, uses. Then there's a class here, and this class is named item, which is what we call our script. It is a type of mono behavior, um, which all of the scripts uh, derive from. And then when you open the class, so the class opens, actually let me zoom in so you guys can see this. So I'm gonna zoom in real quick. So this, this class right here, it opens, and it opens to two functions that are in here. The two functions are start and update. They have a, a comment right here that says what it is. So this says use this for initialization. And when you open it, there's nothing in it. So this would be uh, where you would start initializing. So that's where that would go. And then uh, under update, uh, called once per frame. So as a game uh, continues, it's you know it's timed. It it moves along the same way that our day would move along through uh, what we would call a tick, or uh, you know you can do a timestamp or whatever. But uh, every frame something happens. So the update loop, or the game loop. So let's call it the update loop happens once per frame. So anything that is typed under here, uh, unless it's a comment, happens uh, once per frame or tick. Okay, so uh, those are not the only functions that Unity has. Uh, however, they are uh, the two that you start with. And so there's a lot of them that you can kind of find out. And the easiest way to find out uh, what else is out there in, in Unity, if you go to help and then go to scripting reference. Ooh, that's not supposed to happen. Apparently Unity hasn't updated their help system. So let's go here instead to unity3d.com. And then under here, uh, let's do learn. And then under learn, go to uh, resources. 
I believe, no. Documentation, not resources, documentation. And then up here is scripting API. So in the scripting API, um, here's all the different stuff. Unity Engine, Editor. So if I go into the, the editor, there's all the stuff for editors. Engine is the stuff that you're using for the game. Under classes, here's all the different classes that they currently have. Uh, if I type update, we jump to uh, wherever it is that it says update. So here's tile update, animator update. Uh, but mono behavior update is what we're currently talking about. There's the loop called once per frame. This is an example of how to use it. So this moves something or translates a transform over time. That's the basic way that works. So this is how you get more information about all the different things that Unity can do in scripting. Um, I won't dive in here all the time, but sometimes I will come back just to, as a reminder of where things are and how we get more information about it. Also, uh, you can use JavaScript as well as Boo um, in Unity. Uh, you can click on that to see how those would be written. However, uh, I'm going to, once again, stick with C Sharp. So, uh, back here, we have our item, and our item is an object. It has a collider. Our player needs to collide with the item to pick it up. So instead of it uh, actually being a collider, I'm going to set it as a trigger. So I'm going to click trigger on the collider, and that means that I can just walk through it. There's no actual collision volume, really. However, um, I'm now going to make this bigger and make kind of like a trigger volume uh, area. So I'm going to raise the radius. And as long as I walk within 1.5 away from this, that might be a little too big. I might be able to just jump up and grab it. Uh, let's go 1.2. And I need to be within there to pick up that item. So that way, if I'm below it a little bit, uh, I can still grab it. But there. There's our item with the trigger volume and then uh, the point light underneath it. So uh, I'm going to go back to our script. In here, um, what I need to know is if the player is going to trigger that object. So I don't even need start or update. Um, these functions still exist, however, I'm not going to use them. So I'm going to get rid of it just for clutter, and I'm going to type in a comment real quick of what we're working or what we're going to try to create. So uh, this would be a normal comment, and then this would be if you start it like this, it's a multi line comment. So this doesn't end until you. Uh, asterisk and then close it and now this is normal uh, code again so um, in here in my multi-line comment uh, we're gonna write kind of what we're working on this is just kind of a reminder so uh, if the player uh, enters a trigger volume they will pick up the item and remove it from the scene. Okay, so that's pretty general. So I need a trigger uh, so, uh, function to check the trigger. So one of those is you start a function by typing a void, and then we're going to say on trigger uh, enter. And then uh, on trigger enter uh, takes certain things. So um, in here, uh, this is a collider. This one takes collider, and then I'm going to call the collider other. And I'm going to open this, and then close this, and that creates my my function, so I can, you know, hide it if I want to. Um, and just to show you that this is actually how that's written, jump back over to here. If I go to on trigger enter, and just show you this, here it is: collider on trigger enter. So it. Uh, from collider you can call this function and then this function is done this way it takes a type of collider it says when the collider enters a trigger then you can do something and then actually they have something right here that says destroy uh, other dot game object so this would destroy the player if the player walked in because we're going to look for other um, however i'm going to destroy the item when we pick it up so on trigger enter i'm going to say first of all i want to check to see if it's actually the player and not just uh, any object. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to start an if statement, and I'm going to check for if other, and I'm going to get uh, other is a type of collider. However, colliders can be on game objects. I'm going to look for 
a dot and if you hit uh, if you hit the period it'll open up all the different things you can check for on this object I'm gonna look for its tag and I'm gonna save the tag and uh, do equals equals for a comparison uh, if other dot tag equals and player you write strings or text uh, by opening and closing quotations and then close this off. So that's the if statement. If other dot tag equals player, then open this and close it. So we know that this is, you know, the whole if statement. That way, when the this function gets called, then it's going to call this if statement. And if this if statement is true, then the player is actually in the trigger. Then I want this item to go away. So I'm going to say uh, destroy and open this up. It takes an object. So I'm going to say game object because uh, game object is a type of object so I'm going to destroy this object that the script is connected to uh, I'm also going to do a debug check and say print and this print is going to say uh, uh, item collect and close that each line has to have whenever you call one of these each line has to end in a semicolon so um, this gets called and then this gets called uh, so I'm going to save this script and like I said this is class class opens up we have our comment telling us what this is going to do then on trigger enter other if other is player print that it's going to say item collect in the console and then it's going to destroy the object so let's go see if this works here's the item script is on it I'm going to maximize real quick and hit play and then there's our, our little item sphere. I'm going to jump up here and over here and over here and then collect it. Oh, it disappeared. And down here in the console, it says item collect. So the item actually did get, uh, let's call it picked up. So if that disappears, uh, the player should probably know that it disappeared. So I'm going to make a separate script for the player that's going to track if items are collected. So I'm going to say create C sharp script. I'm going to call it inventory. And inventory, I'm going to put on the player, just like that. Um, and then the inventory script, I need a way to track that I have items. So. Let's get rid of this. I'm going to start another multi-line comment and say when the player uh, equips an item, uh, increment the amount I currently have in my inventory. And that's what it's going to do. Let's close this out. Okay. And so uh, it needs something to track things with. So the item needs to tell the player that I have in fact picked up something. There's many ways we can do this. I can say, uh, let's create a variable. And a variable is just a value that I want to keep track of. So you can say, uh, I'm gonna make it a public variable. So I'm gonna say public. It says a public keyword is an access modifier for types and type members. Uh, so it's gonna be a public int, and int is an integer. I'm going to call this uh, uh, item num for how many items I have. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a default value of zero. And so item num is a public variable that uh, anything should be able to access. So if I save that and go back to the item, instead of item collect, I'm going to say other dot. Uh, I'm going to, I need to get the player and then get a component on the player. So that's as easy as typing get component. So there's get component and it gets a type. And the way you uh, work with this is you do open caret and then uh, actually type the name of the component. So inventory. So there's our, our mono behavior inventory. And then I uh, open and close that. And so this calls other and then it sends uh, a the function get component and it's grabbing the type of component called inventory. And if I had a period after that, I should be able to get access to the inventory script and there's item num. So item num is actually a value that's on there. Uh, 
then if I want to increment this, I can say um, it can equal plus one. You can do it that way. Uh, the shorthand version is just to say plus plus. So uh, I'm going to increment this when I pick up an item. Let's save that. And then on inventory, uh, it has this here, and I can publicly access it from item. But now let's say uh, void update. And then in the update function, I want to print item num. So whenever I uh, pick up something, that should increment. We're going to have to make multiple items to show this. So uh, now that both of those are saved, uh, let's take this item and duplicate it and move this one over here to a lower platform. Cool. And then I'm going to duplicate it, put one of them over here. Cool. And so if I hit play, I've got my three items. One, two, three. And I'm going to run up here. Right down in my console window, uh, real quick, it says zero items are collected. So I'm going to keep moving with that kind of there. If I jump up here and collect, now it says one jump over, now it says two, so I have two of them, and then jump over here, now I have three. So now I've picked up all three items, and uh, the script on my player knows that I have three. So uh, that is your, your very quick, short introduction to some basic scripting, so that I can keep track of some objects and add and, uh, and remove them from the scene when uh, something happens to them. So when, when they're triggered with this uh, collider, the sphere collider, based on the fact that the player has a tag of player and he enters the sphere, it increments it. Also down here where this says item num, if I don't maximize on gameplay and then leave that uh, script shown, um, if I run up here and actually jump up and collect, you'll see that it increments as well. So now it says one down there. Um, I can run over and grab another one. There's two. Oh, and I missed that one. But you can see that it's actually incrementing at the bottom. So um, it's when I set it as public, that's what makes it show here. Uh, if I wanted to hide that for some reason, I could make this uh, just say int, or I could say private int. But when I do that, um, the item script cannot have access to it. So I need to make sure that it's public so that I can uh, talk to that variable. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope that was very, very insightful. Uh, in, the next, uh, in the next video, I'll be doing something with our items uh, to make a little gameplay scenario.